Hi, I'm Phil Dispenza, and welcome back to Collecting, Investing, or Somewhere in Between. This is episode three, and we're continuing with the vintage video games. Uh, today, we're doing the Intelligent System, and uh, there's a little, quite more than I anticipated, so uh, Intelligent is getting its own episode. Um, the Intelligent System uh, was released in 1979, and was probably the second most popular video game system behind the Atari 2600 at the time, and probably their only competition. Um, the graphics uh, for the Intellivision, the gameplay, especially the sports, uh, was superb. I mean, m much uh, better than the Atari graphics. Uh, the controllers were probably a little more complicated uh, at the time. Nowadays, kids can maneuver eight buttons and two joysticks and stuff on one controller. So, um, but at the time, you know, Atari had those just uh, one joystick with the one button or paddle that you just rotate with one button. Um, but the Intellivision had, uh, there were like disc shaped controllers and, and it wasn't always uh, easy to maneuver. Uh, and then below that, they had the keypad. And if you remember, uh, you've seen ColecoVision, you'll, you'll remember them too. Um, but the disc controllers had a, a hard, you know, you had a hard time maneuvering them. So uh, there actually is, uh, they created, I don't know if it was made by Mattel or not, um, but there was like a little suction cup mini joystick you wouldn't put on top of the disc to create a controller. But um, I wanted to talk about, uh, you know, different peripherals you can get for the Intellivision before I go into the software. Uh, but the controller itself, the reason why they had the keypad is because uh, the games were much more complicated. So they created, uh, you know, all the early games had overlays that you would slide uh, above the keypad and it would, you know, it would have a picture. And I'll show you a couple um, when I get to them. Uh, but, uh, you know, you, you would uh, press a button based on the picture. So uh, the easiest one to describe would be... Um, the baseball, but, uh, so, you know, you press a, a fielder, you had nine buttons, so you could put, you know, right field, left field, but the Intellivision itself, um, there were three Intellivision systems over their lifetimes, so you, you'll see Intellivision, then you'll see an Intellivision 2, uh, and then you'll see Intellivision 3, uh, and I remember, uh, probably I'm going to see it anyway, because I'm going to, I'm going to show you a lot of games for the Intellivision, um, there was a total of 156 U.S. release games. Now, uh, I'm including Sears like I did with the Atari. People, again, ooh, Sears, it's not a variant, it's the same game. But um, I'm going to include that with the total titles. But 156 U.S. Rece release games. There were two Parker Brother games that weren't released, which I'll discuss later when I hit Parker Brothers, and the CBS versions of Coleco. Uh, again, weren't released, like the Atari 2600, uh, weren't released in the U.S. Uh, so there's probably about maybe 166, 170 uh, total games. So you had three systems, and uh, of course you did have a Sears version of the original and television. So well, I'm not going to count it as a separate system, but, um, you know, again, it's released at the same time. Now... Um, Besides the Intellivisions themselves, uh, they came out with a few um, peripherals that expanded upon um, the gameplay. So one of the things was an Intellivoice, and uh, you would plug that into the Intelli. They had like a little uh, area where you plug in the uh, extension, as they called it. Uh, Atari didn't have that. ColecoVision did, um, but Intellivision also did. And you plug in, they created an Intellivoice where the games would talk. Again, at this time, you know, uh, technology, you know, people take for granted what games can do nowadays with all these fancy consoles. But, you you know, you had small, you know, memory chips inside these systems. So, you know, again, you can only do so much. So as the years progressed, you know, you get into the early 80s and, you know, got a little more advanced. But, um I'll show you some of the talking games, but, you know, you plugged it in and then, you know, the game would talk to you uh, from your TV or, or have sound, you know, besides just bleep sounds, 
um, they would talk. So another thing they came out with was a keyboard. Um, and when I'm talking about keyboard, I'm talking about like a computer uh, add-on. Because they wanted to expand, uh, you know, again, gameplay by adding a little computer device. I don't think there's too much that uses it. Uh, they also came out with a uh, keyboard, musical keyboard uh, synthesizer. Uh, I actually have all this stuff, but uh, all my hardware is packed away. I have no idea right now. Again, I you know I mentioned <laughs> I got to unpack a lot of stuff. So, but I have all my Intellivision games here. Uh, I made notes. Let me see if there's anything else I wanted to cover. Uh, that's probably it with the uh, hardware. So. As I mentioned, 156 games. I personally own 123. So it's feasible to actually acquire the entire library of Intellivision. Um, the thing is, somewhere, again, right around the computer, I mean, the video game crashes. 84, they sold to another company, just like Atari did. Um, or actually somebody bought. Uh, somebody who actually I think worked for Intelligent purchased, and they changed from Intelligent to INTV, and I just I did discuss, uh, you know, same thing that happened in Atari, uh, but the games uh, released then are a lot harder to find. So you know, let me start showing some things. Uh, there aren't too many third party party P, uh, uh, companies that produce games uh, for the Intelligent. Uh, it's mostly Intellivision themselves or that INTV. But, uh, you know, let's get going. So, just like Atari, um, actually, I don't think they did Atari. Um, Dungeons and Dragons. I've mentioned Dungeons and Dragons in the introduction, uh, super popular. So, Intellivision released two Dungeons and Dragons games. Uh, the first one is just Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. And you go around. Uh, the dungeon and encounter monsters. This is a sealed copy. I do have a decent amount of sealed stuff for the Intellivision. Um, I, again, that when I mentioned nobody beats the Wiz, there were a decent amount of Intellivision games in that uh, truck uh, flea market that I purchased along with Atari. But there were a lot of the Intellivision. So Dungeons and Dragons again. I'm gonna show you. I'm not gonna show you too much with the sports. Uh, the sports game were the most common. Most of the games that were released in 79, 80, 81, and, and I didn't mention this, but I was going to, and I, I should have done it right in the beginning. Uh, I was uh, shown an Intellivision. I only seen it one time during my childhood. Uh, we went to my aunt's house, her husband. Um, again, I think I was maybe 10 at most. Uh, so, you know, I'm used to Atari. And uh, he let us play it. Uh, though I think he was a little hesitant because he was afraid we'd break it. But, you know, I remember playing uh, the sea battle. I remember playing the baseball game especially. And, you know, again, it was a little, a lot more complicated for me. You know, as a kid, uh, you're not exposed to it. Again, I keep mentioning, you know, kids nowadays, five-year-olds can, you know, work a, a cell phone like it's nothing. But, you know, back then you didn't have this type of technology. So, you know, if you're not a, uh, around it and you're not using it, uh, you're not going to do too well with it. So we liked it. It was cool. I, I think I spent, I bet, you know, I had a better time watching, you know, my uncle play or, you know, my cousin was two years older. Um, he was playing and stuff. So, you know, you as a kid, you want to play. But then if it's a little too much at the time, you know, you, you just like you'll be trying to press a button. I pressed the wrong, you know, I pressed the right fielder instead of left fielder. So, um that was the only time I ever played in television, and I did not own one until, again, the mid-90s. That's the first time I ever owned one uh, when I started the video game collecting. So, second Dungeons & Dragons game, and I'm going to have stacks over here. It's called Treasure of Tarman. Um, this was released a little later. Uh, it was dated 82. But there are, you're going to see, when I mentioned the INTV, uh, a lot of the games uh, were were released with both color labels and with the, the white labels. And if I'm right, uh, white labels, they came out with black and white instruction manuals. And uh, this opens from the bottom.
they have white label cartridges. Now, if you look at the Mattel cartridge, it's much smaller. Um, I, I don't know exactly if they, you know, they, I guess they fit the component on a smaller circuit board. Again, this is two years after Atari. So, let's see if there's overlays in here. I'm going to put them in. I don't know if this came with when when I, I oh, there there are overlays. Okay, so here's your overlays. Uh, this is for the Dungeon Dragons, and as you can see, I'll put it a little closer. Um, they came with two. Uh, most of the time, they were the same overlay, and it was made for uh, you know two players. A lot of the sports games and stuff early on is one of the complaints about Intellivision uh, were geared uh, were made only for two players. So. You know, you didn't have a friend. You couldn't play baseball. You couldn't play football or b basketball and stuff. So there was a lot of complaints. It wasn't until later when they re-released games uh, or they made new versions of the baseball game or, or basketball game or something where they, they might have given a one-player option. Um, you're going to see a lot of games that you've never heard of before uh, were never released uh, for other systems, um, even third-party. So here's one in particular. It's called Buzz Bombers. And uh, pollinated flowers can build up. So you're a bee, and I guess you're trying to pollinate flowers. Uh, a lot of these games, if I played them, I played them one time. Uh, the one thing about Intellivision, and, and I did this, uh, I'll never forget, I sold one on uh, the auction site. And I think the guy contacted me three days later and said it died. And he didn't hold me responsible because it was working when I sold it to him. But uh, a lot of the electronic equipment, especially vintage stuff, uh, if you're going to play it, I mean, there's a lot of emulators. I mentioned that earlier in another video, too. There's emulators out there. So you don't get the same real feel experience, but, you know, you can play it without worrying that your equipment, your vintage, you know, systems and stuff are not going to work. Because I remember the Commodore 64, the power supply used to always burn out. And we'd always have fans on it. Maybe that's what you know you need to do. Uh, computers have built-in fans. But, uh, you know, your vintage systems didn't. So, you know, it would heat up and maybe the components would burn out. So uh, if you want to use your Intellivision, maybe put a small fan on it. Okay. So here's another game that probably you've never heard of. And most of the ones you've never heard of are probably... The better um, investing choices, uh, the INTV stuff, the late stuff, I'm actually going to give a list. I'll turn my little note card around because that's where I have the list of most of the rarer ones. And But you'll see them. I mean, if you go on, you know, any site auction or something and you type INTV um, in television, uh, you'll see you sort it by price. A, uh, the, the games usually you'll sell even loose. They're going to sell for a hundred, hundred fifty dollars. Uh, you know, but again, just, most of them didn't have overlays, so you didn't have to worry about you know complete in box means game, uh, the cartridge game, and the instruction manual in the box. You know, most of these complete in box include overlays, so you you need. I guess you could if if you memorize it. I knew somebody who was sending me. Uh, Xerox copies of overlays one time when I made a purchase. They didn't have the actual overlays in there. But, I mean, it's a substitute. You can probably print out your own if you want to play them. So, Hover Force. Probably never heard of this. And, uh, again, I'll show, I'll show some of the uh, uh, screenshots and stuff. So, they, at least in television, they would give you screenshots. So, you have an idea of how advanced the... Um, the uh, graphics were. And most of these I'm showing you are, are released probably in 82. Uh, here's another one. I don't think the comic book is in here, but He-Man, Masters of the Universe, it supposedly, you know, it's supposed to come with a comic book. Uh, it says you fight Skeletor. Here's the uh, pictures. And this, this I recommend. I don't have a sealed copy of this, uh, but if you get a sealed copy, it's He-Man. Like I mentioned with Atari, it's He-Man, and He-Man's hot. Um, I mentioned the uh, synthesizer keyboard. Uh, so here is, and this is sealed, it's called Melody Blaster. This was made for the uh, synthesizer itself. Um, 
notice that he showed a keyboard on the screen. If I can tilt it a little. And, you know, it's for you to learn music. You play along. Uh, you score points as your accuracy. It's almost like that dance uh, revolution or whatever that thing's called when you step forward, back, together, or whatever, with the arrows. The same thing, the same concept. You play the notes, I guess, while it moves across. And it's a way of, uh, you know, learning music. It was, it was 49 key keyboard. Okay, here's another one. This one used the computer. It's called Mind Strike. And there were a few, I think there were a few computer games. But the Mind Strike, uh, again, I didn't even look at what these games are, but here's another one that's probably uh, worth investing if you can find sealed. Again, I don't have it sealed. Uh, another key, computer game, uh, Mr. Basic Meets Bits and Bytes. And this one was a little more complicated. If I remember right, the... Um, the uh, overlays, there's two overlays, but the overlays were different. So you actually have to use both uh, controllers in order to uh, play this game. And I haven't opened up most of the early games. Actually, I think all the early games, they opened front flap. Uh, what I'm showing you right now are a lot of the INTV later releases. They started changing it. So, you know, it was it opened from the top. I guess maybe... Uh, it was easier. Uh, they didn't create that extra flap with the little uh, space where you would hold your uh, your instruction manual and your overlays and stuff. But uh, you know, early on, I'll, maybe I'll find one that's open uh, that opens flaps that I was going to show because I've been I'm trying to gear towards the rarer stuff. So Atari did come out with a few games, but for some reason in television. Uh, had rights to them. I don't know if it was after or before. So here's Pac-Man by Intellivision. There is an Atari released in television Pac-Man. Uh, I don't think I have it boxed, but I have it loose somewhere. Um, but games like uh, Dig Dug was released by Intellivision. Pole Position. I got a loose cartridge of Pole Position here. Uh, was released by in television. So there was some, I don't know, I guess somehow in television gained, Mattel gained the rights or purchased the rights to, to release some games. Um, here's one of my favorites, and I think I mentioned this maybe in the intro. My favorite cartoon of all time is Scooby Doo. And Scooby Doo, it's called Scooby Doo's Maze Chase, and again, this uses the computer uh, add on. So it's cool. It's like, you know, I guess sort of like a Pac-Man or something. But uh, just the, the graphics alone, I'm going to go show this again. It's like, it's like awesome. I, I you know, I, I, every time I think of Scooby-Doo, I was watching it last night. <laughs> so I'm one of the newer cartoons. It's not the same. I'm an original Scooby-Doo guy. Uh, but uh, in future episodes, you're going to see a lot of Scooby-Doo stuff that I have uh, as I come out with uh the other episodes, it's, I, I collected Scooby-Doo everything. Um, here's a later release. So they had NBA basketball, and then they wanted to advance the graphics. You know, this is released. Uh, I don't know if it's actually. It says INTV. It doesn't have a date. It's probably like 84, 85. Um, Slam Dunk. Uh, Super Pro Basketball. This is one of the white labels. This is not as rare as some of the other ones. That I'm going to be mentioned, and it's funny because a lot of their titles uh, have the word Super Pro in it, and I'm just going to skip the word Super Pro. The one game I did not show you um, is Burger Time. Uh, if you lived in the arcades in the early '80s, you know what Burger Time was. Uh, you're the little chef guy, and you have pickles and uh, hot dogs chasing you around, and you have like a pepper thing, and you uh, you know shake it on them to stop them from chasing you temporarily and you know you're building hamburgers the hamburgers are stacked in the middle of the levels and you got to run over a, a, the bottom of the bun and then it falls down a ladder but you run over a piece of lettuce and then it falls down a level and if it's just one level above it would knock the rest of the hamburgers down so you had to build all the hamburgers and um before the 
you get killed by the pickles and peppers and stuff. So I wanted to show when you don't have a box, I used comic book bags to hold. I mean, if you see the width, you know, you could just fold it up. And the next thing you know, you have, you know, a DC, you could tape it up, which is, this one has tape. But I want to show you, this, I mentioned Burger Time because this is the sequel called Diner. This is much harder to find on the Intellivision. So here's the label. If you notice, I mentioned in Atari at the plaque, you can see the glue bleeding through. And once again, a black and white manual. You see the little chef guy being chased by uh, pickles. Uh, no, he's not chased by pickles here. He's chased by different things. Looks like a mug of beer and hot dogs. Besides, it was eggs was the other thing he was chased back, uh, chased by uh, in the original, um, in the original Burger Time. So moving on, this is another one I got from that whiz buy at the flea market. It was called Shark Shark. And, uh, again, unique. You're going to see a lot of unique games for the Intellivision. And that's good because if you could buy something for the Atari, even if it wasn't uh, up to par with the Intellivision, you know, you would accept it. Like I said, you know, you bought Tun Donkey Kong for Atari 2600. It was nothing compared to the ColecoVision. Now, that's something I would upgrade. But um, So Intellivision, Mattel, they were smart. They came out with a lot of games you couldn't get, you know, anywhere else. So it's like, okay, I'm going to play something that's unique. So Shark Shark, uh, let's see, nibble at the same shark's tail. So you, you're you're not the shark, but, you know, look at the thing. I guess you're trying to feed off the shark. Again, it's sealed. Never, I never played a lot of these Intellivision games. I think I was afraid that my Intellivision were going to burn out. Uh, I... I I never sold really too many uh, open copies of Intellivision games because I had so much with the Atari and other things. I never really got around to it. So somewhere buried in my um, boxes of stuff, I had about a few hundred boxed Intellivision games. And that's why if you looked at my website, I had Intellivision listed and I started it. And it was easy because I had a stack of overlays like this tall. Uh, that was just buying. And then I had tons and tons of box games, but again, it got put on hold. So I wanted to show you, this is one of the games that were initially released. It's called, uh, this is Space Armada. This is the INTV version, white label, uh, top loading box. But uh, it's a blue box. Uh, not rare, not really too much, but I wanted to show you it because right behind it, this is a variation, red box version. And finally, we get to show you the opening. Oops, and that's why <laughs> the game fell out. Uh, here's your overlays. Here's your um, manual. This is sometimes, like you could look at it, it's a tray in here. Uh, it's sometimes sideways. Sometimes a tray, after a while, they didn't include a tray. Um, but uh, they... Uh, They um, changed it around. They didn't want to keep doing it. So it's another common title, uh, Space Battle, Blue Box. I'm showing you this because of the variation. Opens up the front, and then right behind it, a red box version. And this one also opens up. I don't know why they actually created. I think maybe one of them came with the system. But um, a lot of the Atari, I mean Atari, and a lot of the Intellivision variations are um, uh, where it's made uh, and the physical box um, construction, like I said, whether or not the it has a plastic tray or it's sideways or, you know, I'm, I'm not too sure about the slit that the manual and the overlays go in. There might, might, might have been a variation with that. Uh, I don't remember on my site if I start mentioning that, but uh, there is an Intellivision website out there. I don't remember the name of it. And this guy was helping me out, but then all of a sudden I can't get access to his pictures. They're all like thumbnail size, so I can't use them. Uh, but there's a lot. Also, some foreign. You'll see um, English, French, the Canadian versions of some of these. And uh, in fact, uh, when I bought Intellivoices, uh, not from the Wiz, I did buy like eight of them from him. 
uh, I call it the Wiz, but it's a flea market. Uh, I also acquired somewhere along the line a French version, a Canadian version of IntelliVoice. So, you know, even IntelliVoice has, I'm assuming the system probably has variations too like that. So, to continue, because I don't want to keep dragging on, Super Pro Football, again, they improved uh, the game slightly probably but these these didn't come with overlays that the, whatever they did they changed it so it didn't come with overlays i want to show a couple of other rarer and this box is a little beat this one's called thunder castle made by intv uh says 1982 i think some of these copyrights are uh not when the gamers released and uh i was gonna correct pac-man which i'll, I'll probably uh, put in a different video, uh, my Atari 2600 Pac-Man, I had mentioned, uh, another game that I never got a second box version, uh, it's called Tower of Doom, uh, it's a sort of a Dungeons and Dragons game, but I don't think it has the Dungeons and Dragons logo or anything, uh, you see the tape pull in the bottom, uh, but if you look, there's actual dragon on the back there in one of the screenshots, so, uh, I, I think the, the the front itself has such a cool picture. I'm always into skeletons. That's my other favorite thing. I love skeletons. So this one grabbed my attention right away. Um, I'm going to end in television, uh, made games with... Uh, I, I made a mistake. I mentioned four games released. I think there was a homebrew, and that's probably why I thought four. Uh, but there's actually three games of Tron. Um Tron Deadly Discs. Here's my sealed copy. Tron Mazatron, which is another sealed copy. And Tron Solar Sailor, which is one of the IntelliVoice games. So you plug in your voice module, and this would talk to you. Uh, I'm going to try to open this so it doesn't fall out. Uh, again, notice the slit on the side where the manual and is the manual in there. No, the manual goes behind this slit here. And then there's a separate slit just for the uh, overlays. So I don't know because I never got to these areas of um, the um, of my website uh, to know how many variations there are of any of this stuff. I think I did maybe six titles, seven titles, something like that. So I have a lot there on those titles. And if you look, even the overlays had variations. Okay, so I want to move on. Sears, um, I'm missing 20 games total with the two Parker brothers uh, to own the entire library. Not everything's boxed. Uh, but the Sears, I actually missing six out of the 20 or say Sears. Um, they all came in these red boxes. Atari had black boxes. Television has red boxes. And a lot of them were, again, with the same exact game. Um, sometimes they didn't uh, call it uh, this one. For some reason, I don't have the manual. Um, Space, uh, Space Hawk. This one sealed. Star Strike. I just grabbed three random ones. Sears, they're, again, they're tougher to find. If you look on the auction site, you'll see. People are asking, you know, not not necessarily, you know, exorbitant prices, but you know, when you're paying, you can. Uh, here's the thing. I'm going to talk about. It. Let, let me get back to Intellivision before I move on to the third party. And television release games, uh, investment wise, I, I would not suggest anything early. Sports, the sea battle, whatever it is, Starhawk, Space uh, Armada, none of that uh, for investments because there's tons of it out there. Uh, I was buying. People are trying to get money for the Intellivision games. I don't think they're succeeding too much. Uh, even like I'm talking about open, even a complete, uh, complete, not incomplete, uh, complete. Uh, but I wouldn't pay probably more than a dollar, two dollars a game, uh, unless there's other things, something like the Trons thrown in or the Adventure, uh, Advanced Dungeons Dragons. But uh, unless they are the INTV, so. Basketball has an INTV version. Golf has an INTV version. And so 
the regular release open book like opening front with the pocket for the stuff uh, the INTV versions um, top, you know a normal top opening flap like I just did you know I showed you a couple of the games doing that uh, but don't invest at all in any even sealed I mean they're common you find that stuff all over the place a lock and chase uh, I like I said I didn't cover a lot of games so investment wise no collecting hey you're a collector you collect everything and like I said it's a small library so for a few thousand dollars you could probably get everything boxed because even the rare ones you know probably shouldn't run more than a few hundred dollars uh, anyway so Sears much harder people asking ten fifteen dollars a game sometimes I'm missing six I'd like to try to acquire those uh, and you know I, I might pursue trying to finish off the Intel video at least try to even get them loose the, the rarer ones um, I'm going to show you something actually by Intellivision. Here's another INTV Commando. Uh, i thinking this is the same release as the Activision one. But here's something that I picked up. I have no clue. I think I might have paid $20 or $30 for it. Uh, it's called a demonstration cartridge. And let's see if I can see. I think it says it right. Okay. So this, this is from 1983. And if you went to the retail store, um, you know, you, you encountered, if, if you couldn't play the games themselves, they would have a demonstration cartridge plugged in the system and hooked up to a TV, and then it would run either, it would run the small snippets of a game, or it would just show screenshots and, and jump. Sometimes there were like 10 games on that, as I'm just guessing that, but it would flip just to give you an idea of what it looks like or what games are coming out or something. Um, Okay, so I did say before I go on to the other third party stuff, because there's not much there anyway, uh, the rarer uh, Intellivision games. Uh, for the computer, uh, they had some tape cassette release games uh, for the Intellivision. I, I'm assuming you just as, cause, you know, connected your own cassette player. Uh, there was no cassette player like the KidVid release for the Intellivision. Uh, but. It was a game, well, I, was, I call it a game, it was a learning uh, program called Conversational French. And it's probably the rarest cartridge, they, uh, according to that price guide I have. Um, this is, I mean, that price guide's 20 years old, but um, there was only two discovered at the time. So in cartridge form, not cassette. So they found a couple of cartridges. So it's out there, maybe. I don't know if it even has boxes. I have no clue. It's that's one of the ones on my missing list. Um, but there was a games called uh, Learning Fun. They made two of them, one and two. I actually do not have. These are the ones I don't know. I definitely don't have. Uh, Body Slam, uh, Super Pro Wrestling, whatever. There's everything Super Pro in these. Uh, Mountain Madness, Skiing, um, Spiker Volleyball. Uh, stadium mud buggies, which I think it, it might be uh, not too sure because it's called stadium mud buggies. It sounds like uh, what do you call those uh, monster trucks or something? Uh, a couple more super pro the the Catalan and triple challenge. And I've been looking for that for a while. I'm not too sure why I never find it. I believe that has three games in it. I don't even remember what games they are. So when you don't have something. Uh, you have a tendency, especially with everything else you own, of not knowing or not remembering. I mean, volleyball speaks for itself. Wrestling speaks for itself. So um, let me continue walking you through some of the third parties. Um, Activision didn't have too many games. I think the only game I'm missing uh, for Activision is Beam Rider completely. I might have – I'm going to show you box games. I don't know if uh, I have some loose ones. A game you not released for Atari. Dreadnought Factor, and uh, it might have been a little too complicated to release for the Atari uh, at the time. Um, Happy Trails. <laughs> it's, this had some cool art. And, uh, you know, it says conceived and designed by Carol Shaw for one or two players. So at least, you know, you can play. And again, uh, these are, these, uh, you know, maybe I'll show you it. They slide. These are like the Imagic games for Atari. They actually slide in. 
uh, and the 20th Century Fox did the same thing, but they sl slid sideways. Uh, but they slid in instead of uh, just opening towards the top. Uh, I got Pitfall. They had to release Pitfall. Pitfall is always popular. My copy is sealed, and it's in nice condition, I think, too. Uh, I don't know if every uh, every Activision game was shrink-wrapped. Uh, another popular one, River Raid, as you know. Uh, but notice that the art has, has sometimes changed. Stampede it was popular enough, I guess, for uh, the Atari. So they, and if you look at the screenshot on this, this actually looks pretty much like the Atari. Uh, let's see, yeah, dated 1982. So it might have come out at the same time. Might have come out maybe a year later. Uh, so in Activision, there's not too many titles for uh, this this system. Um, Coleco, they actually had a decent amount. I'm gonna run through one the, the list of what I have here or my box ones. I don't have Ladybug boxed. Ladybug was never released for Atari. I think it was supposed to. They might even have a prototype of it. Uh, but Carnival, and here you know it's a basic. And, but here's the sticker. It says specifically, not for use with the Intellivision 2 system. So, I don't know exactly how they discovered it. There must have been some kind of component inside the Television 2 that wouldn't run these cartridges, but it would run on the, you know, the original Intellivision, and Intellivision 3 wouldn't run on the 2. So, um, I don't know if all the Coleco games don't run for Intellivision 2, because I remember, I think, because here's Donkey Kong, and if you look, much better graphics, I think, than the Atari version. Uh, my box is a little beat on this one, but Donkey Kong Jr., and a lot of the art itself, the drawings, are similar to, and you know, the box themselves, the way it's laid, they're all blue boxes, but they're laid out the same format for uh, Mousetrap. Again, there's the sticker, not for Intellivision 2. And, uh, you know, they're all arcade games. Here's one that, again, also was not released for the Atari. Um, Turbo. And when I get to ColecoVision, Turbo actually, I think they made it with or for the steering wheel. Um, so here's your first view of Turbo. Again, arcade classic. Uh, Venture, another popular one. Common. I, I don't think any of these are rare. And I think almost all of these have CBS uh, versions out there that were released overseas. And finally, I'm going to show you Zaxxon. And uh, again, it's similar to Dutari. There's no screenshot on this one. So we're going to move on to Imagic. I have a lot of Imagic games to show. And the thing about Imagic, they're probably the second behind the Intellivision Mattel releases themselves. I think they have the most games. for They beat out Activision. For, maybe because the companies who are making these um, games, the third-party software companies said, you know, Intellivision is not as popular. We're not going to sell as many games. So they didn't want to pursue, you know, let's make a few. Like Atari made hardly any. Uh, I believe maybe three or four. Let me see what I have on. Uh, if there's a list here on my little card, Atari. I can't even see here. Centipede, Defender, Pac-Man, and that's maybe it. And I have. I don't have them boxed. Um, I think I have everything loose. Okay, so back to a magic. Um, Atlantis. Released for Atari 2600. Also released this one sealed. Seal's not perfect. Uh, here's a game. The very common Beauty and the Beast. And this is similar to King Kong. Uh, you know, I actually like some of their, their magic games. Uh, Demon Attack. Had to be released. And this says Revision B on the back. So you know that there's probably a revision A. There might be a version that doesn't have a revision at all. 
uh, you can't see it, uh, but it says revision B. Um, here's a recommendation I would suggest if you can buy it, especially sealed. Mine's not sealed. Uh, I don't think it's worth a lot of money, but Dracula. And, uh, you know, it says Dracula rises again, taking the form of a vampire bat. So I guess you're trying to run away from Dracula or try to kill Dracula. And again, here's the overlay. I mean, the overlay, the instruction manual. This does have overlays. I'm going to show you it because it's cool. Um, it's like a little graveyard with a bat. So cartridge itself has the same photo as the box and manual. So, you know, it's it's anything, remember I mentioned Halloween in my intro video, Halloween, even though it's not uh, licensed Dracula from Universal Studios, it's something cool. Dragonfire. This is another one of my favorites, actually. Anything Dungeon Dragons related, uh, I've, I've always fantasy, I've always had uh, uh, drawing to. Um, here's another game, unique, uh, similar probably to the MASH, but a lot more, uh, uh, difficult. It's called Microsurgeon, and it's cool because they show this brain, and you look at the, the head with the brain and stuff. Uh, I guess you're going through, uh, neurons or something, I'm, I don't even know. Um, another game unique to the system, Ice Trek. Um, we show both, but it's cool. It's, just, it's like guys got. It looks like a Viking with a uh, double-ended axe. Uh, they have double-bladed axe. Uh, I'm gonna keep going through because I don't want to. I don't want to make this video way too long. I don't want to reach an hour this time. Uh, Nova Blast. This was. I don't think was released for the Atari at all. Uh, I think it's for the ColecoVision. There's a version. Uh, but again. Was the software a little too advanced for an Atari 2600? It couldn't handle it. Or maybe they would have had to spend too much more time on it uh, going around uh, the bugs or whatever. Safecracker. This is cool. Uh, you know, you, you think about spy stuff and uh, you want to break into safes. It says video card game cartridge also compatible with Sears Super Video Arcade. So, uh, you know, I, sometimes I guess they would. Um, say whether or not it would work with uh with uh, the sears version because uh, you know you had the problem with um the intellivision 2 swords and serpents another dungeon and dragons type of game if you look on the uh, right side here he's fighting a dragon there's a lot other oh i forgot one uh here's another game this one's rare um you're gonna pay not a not, not a fortune for it. you shouldn't have to pay a fortune, but a loose copy complete might run you fifty dollars. Uh, Tropical Trouble. Uh, this one guy looks like almost like ogre from uh, Revenge of the Nerds. Every time I saw that, but there's a few other games that are rare. Uh, White Water comes uh, to mind uh, by a magic. So this the magic library for the Intellivision. Um, you know, it, it's pretty vast. Uh, here's the Atari. I do have. I have one Atari box game. Uh, tab, flap, is Centipede. Uh, like I said, Pac-Man. They made it. Defender. They made it. I have them loose. Uh, probably with the, the manual too. But um, you know, I don't have it. Uh, the other ones complete. Uh, I was going to show you. There's a couple of cartridges. The only Sega release was Congo Bongo. Uh, that is. Probably top three rare, top four rare for an Intellivision system. Uh, I don't, that's another one I don't have at all. Um, Sewer Sam. This is by Interphase. I think this is the only Interphase release for Intellivision. And here's the overlay. That's all I have. I have one overlay and I have the loose cartridge. I don't have the manual. Um, I lied. Here's the other Interphase. Blockade Runner. Uh, this I actually do have boxed. It says Interface Collector's Edition. A game that, you know, I don't know how 
if it was released. Like I said, a lot of these games were released for the computers, Atari 400, Apples, or whatever. Uh, some might be in disc form uh, because the disc held more uh, soft, like the, the program itself. The long, bigger programs they can hold. Uh, and finally, I'm going to fin finish up with the Parker Brothers. Um, I mentioned the Parker Brothers, two games that weren't released in the U.S., uh, extremely difficult to find. Uh, if you have to have them for your library, uh, you'll probably pay, pay a pretty penny because the price guide 20-something years ago valued them, I think at $75 a piece, is both uh, Super Cobra, which is fun, uh, but Tutankham. And I love that game too. You know, your little uh, explorer and like Egypt or something. Uh, but most popular games, I don't have Popeye boxed, uh, but I do have it loose. Uh, Frogger boxed, had to come out with it because it's popular. Hubert boxed. And for some reason, Frogger's a uh, two piece box, while Cubert is the one piece. I described this in the Atari video where it loads from the top like normal boxes and then my recommendation of course for uh it's a little warped is star wars empire strike back the only star wars game released for the intellivision i have the box upside down so i'm just going to flip it um so if you can get these star wars games i don't think parker brothers came out with overlays here's the manual and then Here's what it looks like on the inside, two-piece box. So it has the cartridge, and again, like I said, the cartridges are smaller, uh, more condensed. So there's a lot out there for Intellivision, and it's a fun system. Uh, but remember, if you want to play the sports games early on, you need two people. Um, my suggestion is, like I said, put the fan if you're going to... Uh, actually use the systems but uh you know oh i forgot to mention one other game that uh would be super cool to get graded i don't own that one either and that's probably why i forgot it was the jetsons is made same thing like the scooby-doo this is the jetsons way with words um so if you find that game and i might you know search it down and add it to the collection soon uh i have this itch to uh finish like i said i want to maybe finish this library uh spend more money doing this than buying more atari games but uh like, like i said put in your comments ask your questions share my video uh recommend it to friends uh we're going to move on next week to or two weeks i'm not too sure how i'm releasing these things because the atari had to split up into two videos because they were too long uh next time i'll say next time is the coleco vision and I have all my box games and stuff already. I just got to sort through, see what I want to show, like I just did with the Intellivision. And uh, we'll take it from there. So I'll see you next time.